Good morning. This is Pastor David Charlton. I want to welcome you for being with me today for my devotion. Uh, today we're going to continue to read about uh, the resurrection of Christ. Today is Tuesday, April the 21st. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. One of our well-known hymns says, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives. What comfort this sweet sentence gives. He lives, he lives, who once was dead. He lives, my ever-living head. He lives triumphant from the grave. He lives eternally to save. He lives exalted, throned above. He lives to rule his church in love. Continue our, continuing our reading from 1 Corinthians 15, uh, we start with the 19th verse today. For if for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then it is coming those who belong to Christ, then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that this does not include the one who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will be subjected to the one who put all things in subjection under him, so that God may be all in all. 1 Corinthians 15, 19 through 28. Yesterday I mentioned how the resurrection is essential to the gospel. You might even say, Jesus is risen is the gospel in a nutshell. Everything else is a logical conclusion that follows from the resurrection. If Christ is raised, then our sins are forgiven. If Christ is raised, we have eternal life. If Christ is raised, then he truly was the son of God. If Christ is raised from the dead, then he truly did die for us. If Christ is raised, then he truly is present with us at the Lord's table. Believe it or not, however, there are people who have tried to separate faith in Christ from faith in the resurrection. Beginning in the 19th century, there were men who tried to make Christianity fit into a modern scientific view of the world. They couldn't believe in the miracles reported in the Bible, and in particular, they couldn't believe in the resurrection. It just wasn't scientific to them. The result was a picture of Jesus as a wise man a great religious teacher, perhaps even the greatest religious teacher. For them, he was a teacher of timeless religious truths about the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. He taught about the value of faith and the importance of ethical living, but he never claimed to be God. As one critic of this movement would say, they created a picture of Jesus that turned out to look just like themselves. Jesus became a 19th century European intellectual. Another critic said that when they claimed to be talking about God, they were really just talking about mankind in a loud voice. Their real faith was not in God, but in the goodness of mankind and in the power of progress. This same take on Jesus is alive and well today. Paul tells us quite clearly in 1 Corinthians 15 that this is all a waste of time. If Christ is not raised from the dead, then it makes no difference. 
However, with St. Paul, Christians still affirm that Christ is risen. He truly rose from the dead. He is not just a wise teacher. He is the Lord. He is the first fruits of a new creation where all of his enemies will be defeated and the last of these enemies is death. Christians are not embarrassed to confess that we believe this because the resurrection of Jesus is the gospel itself. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you raised our Lord Jesus from the dead through the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us to believe this and proclaim it today and always, and to proclaim it with firm conviction and with faith, because you have raised our Lord from the dead through the power of the Spirit. You will also raise us from the dead through the power of the Spirit. Because he lives, those who believe in him live also. And because he lives, we know that he truly is the Son of God, that he truly died for our sakes, that our sins are truly forgiven, and that we have tr truly have eternal life with you, and that through the power of the Spirit, he truly is with us and in us even now. Help us, Lord, always to believe this and to confess it clearly and firmly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with me today. And Christ is risen.